morning, everyone, and thank you for coming out this morning for the 2022 John H. Chafee Heritage Award for the Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Quarter. It gives me great pleasure to be here today, and a warm thank you to Dr. Fitzpatrick for hosting us this morning. I also want to thank the members of our board of directors that are here, Lee Dillard Adams, Harry White, and Jeannie Hebert, and Donna Williams, so thank you for coming out on this beautiful spring morning. Since 1986, the Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Quarter has acted as the storytellers, we've acted as the guide, and we've acted as the champions of the valley as we celebrate this region as the birthplace of the American Industrial Revolution. We accomplish this, though, in great part through all of our friends, through all of our volunteers, and through all of our partners. We couldn't do it without them. And the Shaky Heritage Award was created in the late senator's memory to recognize individuals, groups, and students who have worked on projects that promote our cultural heritage, our natural environment, and our quality of life here in the Blackstone River Valley. And at this time, I'd like to turn over the, the ceremony to the chair of our board of directors, Senator Richard Martin. Oh, I did, I forgot to also say that we have the superintendent of our newest national park here as well, uh, Superintendent Wright Place. Thank you for coming today. Also, welcome to the board. In order to understand the significance uh, of, the, of this board, John is really similar to John H. Jaffe, Rhode Island. Uh, it's important, I think, to understand Senator Jaffe's career as a person, as a public servant, and as an environmental leader. And when, it, when he passed away, one of his closest friends in the Senate, the late Senator William Roth of Delaware, said, and I quote, he, he said without hesitation that few individuals have served America with the distinction that Senator Chafee exhibited in his many years of public service. From his active duty in the Marine Corps, where he saw action in both the Second World War and in Korea, to his early years as a member of the Rhode Island House of Representatives, his years as governor and as secretary of the Navy, to his 23 years in service in the United States Senate, John's patriotism was beyond philosophical pragmatic and concrete. And then we have more work like that today. <laughs> and the Congress as a whole. Uh, he had a keen sense of duty, a profound sense of responsibility to knew his constituents and served them with such distinction and devotion that he was elected in 1976 and returned to Washington four times despite the fact that he was a Republican in a heavily overwhelming Democratic state. Much of his effectiveness was his ability to find bipartisan cooperation and stand fast on issues that were important to the individuals and families he represented. Among these issues of deep concern was the environment. So among uh, Senator James' many accomplishments was his leadership, along with uh, his House colleague uh, from Rhode Island, the late President St. Germain, his Senate colleague Claymore Pell, and Senate colleagues as well from Massachusetts, Edmund Kennedy, John Kerry, and Jim Sponsored the Black Silver Valley National Heritage Carter and Naval Statue and continued throughout his career, maintaining a strong interest in his work and its funding. On Sunday, when Senator, the Senator passed away, his colleagues named the Carter in his honor, and the Carter Commission, predecessor to the Black Silver Valley Heritage Incorporated, uh, named his, his highest award as the John H. Chafee Award. The award presented today is, is uh, Eric as Governor of the was really to recognize people who have been leaders, whether individual or groups, uh, in the valley in both cultural preservation, environmental stewardship, uh, and improving the quality of life uh, in the Blackstone Valley. So today we recognize Blackstone Valley Tech uh, students and their instructor, uh, a volunteer from a new part of our community, and a leading member of the United States Congress, who played all played important roles. 
next I'd like to present the award to the students for the Black Oak Vocational Technical High School. Should have been named the Michael Fitzpatrick High School, but maybe <laughs> uh, later. Uh, after he's gone, <laughs> Michael and I go back a long ways. He's still younger than me, though. Uh, as, as chair of the board of directors of the Black Soul Heritage Park and Incorporated, and as on behalf of the board and the residents of the Black Soul Valley, pleased to present the 2021 Johnny Chaffee Award for the Black Soul Valley Technical High School, painting and design technology students and instructors by the Black Blackstone Valley Regional Vocational Technical High School, and its students, its faculty, and its highly regarded superintendent, Dr. Patrick, they represent the best in public education. Valley, the Commonwealth, and I would say in the nation. I'm proud that you note that one of my godsons is a student here, as a senior, graduate, Mason Jordan. And when the Northbridge Historical Commission needed a new interpretive sign in the Long Whites of Common, it's no surprise that they turned to the talented students in this world's education technology class. The signs are a necessity at every part. They serve as a multitude of purposes and enhance outdoor spaces, increasing awareness and educational opportunities. Signage is an extremely popular choice for interpretive media services. Although the process of developing interpretive signage is, requires many hours of research and design, when the final product is built to last, the interpreter must have deep understanding of willingness to research and discover the significance of events and places of people. In this case, it was for the village of Whitesville, which is now part of the Blackstone Valley um, National Historical Park. We've got to find acronyms for all these things. Uh, and we'll be posting visitors far and wide as they visit Whitesville and the park. Every park and recreation area has a story to tell or information to share with visitors and students in this women's class. It's a great pride that a project on which they work is one of the highlights of Valley residents who visited in years to come. And among our members, I should point out, among the members of our board, we actually have a white, a white in there. White, white, white. Uh, he's, he's not as old as the original white. He's, he's working his way there. But anyway, the, uh, I don't know if they're all the students or John.
got you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to Black Stone Valley. Uh, I can imagine in 1789 when Samuel Slater arrived in this area, he anticipated that he would walk in the and continue to advance the legacy. It's interesting, Samuel Slater set a tone for a new economic development, but it's a very different workforce than the one we have today. We're very fortunate to have the support uh, of the community and the quality of students to continue to strive both blending their academic and their vocational technical studies to do incredibly well. Not to arrive here as successful students, but to leave here as successful students. There are occasionally when your success is misunderstood. It gives people the impression you were superstars before you arrived. You know that's not true. I don't wish to take away anything from you. But your commitment, your sacrifices, your work, the efforts at home, from families, all kinds of support, the quality of teaching here, the special education program, the support we have of the legislature and Congress. Uh, Congressman Governor is no surprise uh, visitor to us. He usually comes as part of the uh, support for the Freedom of Use Lunch Program. He's a strong advocate for nutrition. These are individuals. It's quite a season, so I certainly will recognize town manager Jim Smith. Part of our effort was to recruit quality teaching staff, people who would take you for a challenge, uh, encourage you to accomplish things. I encourage you to recognize the sensitivity of our environment. I encourage you to give back to the community. This award is an example. And certainly, the Chafee recognition and the legacy of Chafee is perfect as far as the commitment, the recognition, the sensitivity, and the quality that we hope to produce. My special congratulations on behalf of the school committee and the leadership team, Tom Lamont, the instructor, and the board.
is a found, I think a founding member of the Cemetery Conservation uh, Ambassadors Group of the Blackstone Valley. Um, and it may not science, uh, improving the names on a, in a cemetery, having them visible and readable, and it might not sound like the most exciting job in the world, but it's a very important job because it helps us to remember people who came before. And in the set of cemeteries in the valley, particularly in the town of Sutton, there are people there, they are rest there, who helped plow the fields of the early agricultural era of the Blackstone Valley. People who worked in the mills, in the spinning mills and in the textile weaving mills, uh, who worked hard and were part of the original, probably the revolutionaries of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, as they as they work to build the valley as a much better place, and as Superintendent Fitzpatrick indicated, the it's a different type of industry today. Although in its day it was the high tech uh, aspect of it, as far as the design of the looms that the, uh, Slater was uh, indicated, we spent time in England, across from England originally, and memorized the designs of some of the machinery so that he could because the British. At the time, they weren't happy with us to be in with because we just separated uh, from them. But they also guarded their industrial prominence very jealously, as companies tend to do today. Uh, and it was something that uh, to to get that machinery constructed here and then to develop the mill system was a major uh, change in the history of the United States and ultimately of the world. And that's a major reason why the Blackstone Valley is recognized. But Ross has taken on a, a responsibility of remembering our, those who came before us, who, upon whose shoulders we all stand today. And I'm pleased to recognize Ross as a founding member and as a major contributor as a volunteer uh, in helping to restore the cemeteries in Sutton. We hope we can get you all over the valley to someday, Ross. <laughs> can you, once you finish the job in Sutton, you could come up and... You might consider that contamination. <laughs>
who've supported that and, and uh, helped me with many of these things and everything else. Uh, and so I think she's a, certainly a vital force. We had a couple come up from uh, Rhode Island City and uh, Carolyn and Coochie. First off, uh, Blackstone Valley organized a presentation item back in April of 2019 um, in the Swan Point Cemetery. And, uh, Brian Stevenson, the President of the Southern Historical Society, and I attended that. We were astounded by what they were presenting because it wasn't just about do this, do that. It was about the nuts and bolts of the process, the things that you've been learning, not just simply what you're being taught, but you get your hands on, finding out the details of what you have to do to do these presentations, the restorations properly, the cleaning and the restorations. Based on that, we had to come up and do a presentation to the Historical Society. Based on that, we went to the select board, or first we went to town management and asked if uh, they would authorize allowing us to consider doing this, uh, cemetery commissioners, and Jim Smith, town manager, certainly said yes. Went to the select board, they encouraged us to consider doing this. We had them come up, Gary and Carl come up and do a training session for us in August of 2019. That launched it. This was hands on out there doing the work, and you know, showing us how to do it, and everything else. Then they, they, for months after that, I've had numerous email conversations back and forth around the details. And these things were all white. <laughs> Others who have been involved. I mentioned Brian and Stevenson's wife. Brian was uh, president. Historical Society, who's also a major worker in this project. Dave Peasy, John Delcafini, and Marion Delcafini. I want to mention also John and Marion, although they helped us out, sent a cemetery, continued to. Two of them, an elderly couple, took on one of the other cemeteries in town to clean it. In one summer, they cleaned over 240 stones in there, two individuals. The place is really nice now. Pam Roshalo they took on another one, another resident of the town, a member of the historical site, and cleaning another one. And Martha Magno, cleaning another one, at the Globe. Jim Benaj, Jim Johnson, a couple of cemetery commissioners who have been involved and helped us out to things. Dan Nichols has done some cleaning. She's been out there doing things. We've had five scouts involved with us, uh, now five. Four have done Eagle Scout projects, and the fifth one is about to be launched. Uh, Derek Etwood, and you'll see out the back of the table there, I put out some things as to uh, what they've done and displays it. Uh, Derek and his father and some members of the Historic Society we built an historic crypt in Southern Cemetery. Derek McCullough uh, came in and helped us. Uh, he and the scouts that he organized uh, cleaned over 120 stones in Southern Cemetery and finished that part of the project for us, which was also a psychological boost for us to get that done. Paul Noel came in, trained with us, went over to West Milford, who worked over there. Ethan Westbury came in last year, worked with us, went out, set up a scout uh, uh, cleaning process, took on another cemetery in town. In one weekend, 26 of them, cleaned over 200 stones. All done. Mm -hmm. All the way. Kyle Andrews is the one who's coming in now, and he is he's targeting, and he's coming in and learning the process with us. On, take on the cemetery, they have the brush cleaning and clean up and everything. And, uh, Bill Augustus, Roy Rebecca, Deborah Moore, Keith Downer, Emma Downer, Peter Michelson, Christine Watkins. Off the field, Open Gender and Post has been up, donated several thousand dollars to this process and everything else. Coopman Lumber donated waste material for them, the things that we needed for what we're doing. Home Depot, again, donated materials that we could use. Silver Stone, over and over, has donated some scrap stone that we've been using to reinforce these things with countertop materials and everything else. Home and Printing over there has done some work uh, as far as printing these black stones. Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Corridor has been lighted. This ended up what they decided to do as far as putting together this uh, Cemetery Conservation Ambassadors Program and everything else, getting Betty and Carl involved in that whole thing has been the launch point. And now they're trying to broaden it, the towns involved and everything else is great and vital to 
to us getting going and vital to us keeping going. I also already mentioned Jim Smith, select board, they were vital to us and continue to support us. Uh, it's a lot of work. What we're trying to preserve out there is history. There's no question about that. We are also trying to see what is on these stones in memory of. We get these things up and visible and everything else in memory of. That's wonderful. Two other things I think are critical here. I would love to see these places become walking parks. There are a number, if you've been down, been down to uh, Cambridge down to uh, Mount Auburn Cemetery, it's a gorgeous walking park. I think one of the reasons that people are reluctant to go in here is not only the death concept and everything else, but the fact that they're looking at trash, they're looking at stones broken and everything else. If we get these things sorted out and cleaned up, it would be great that people go in there, take a walk, enjoy it, be comfortable walking through the area. Take your dog in there, yeah, clean up after the dog. Go walk, enjoy yourself. Consider it an open green space. But the other thing that will happen while you're doing that is you're going to learn history. You're going to learn about people. You're also going to save power. Some damage, maybe I can help out and take care of something. The other really vital part is, I touched on the number of scouts that are involved, is the younger generations and what you're doing, getting involved in the positive side. Things that you're doing, things that you're learning, that you can use to help other things, people doing things, doing them better environmentally and everything else, has been vital. It's been encouraging to this old guy to see younger people getting involved. And I thank you for what you've done, and I hope we get more scouts involved to keep them going to go out and whole thing. Thank you again. Uh, the best town manager in the Commonwealth, <laughs> the town manager of Sutton. Uh, I'm sure, and uh, I noticed the Rich Fleckman, uh, Jesse Lomanic, so that you want to come up with us and uh, sure, say a sure. couple words too? Sure. The only town manager in attendance on my bed. First of all, good morning and thank you for having us. Um, it's a pleasure to join uh, Ross Weaver's uh, award ceremony. Um, a, a lot of, before I do, let me recognize the chairman of the board, one of my bosses, and, uh, and two other members of the board. Jesse Lomanic is chairman of the board. Wendy Mead is a member, and David Hall is a member of the board as well. So, as, and Pam Nichols, who uh, drafted this nomination, um, and, uh, and when we submitted it, thank you for, for your efforts as well. Uh, you know, Ross has talked all about fixing uh, the cemeteries and repairing the stones and everything else, which was critical uh, to the cemetery that is behind Town Hall, the Center Cemetery. Um, but it really started with Ross coming to my office uh, a handful of years ago, mentioning uh, the condition of the cemetery records. Uh, the cemetery records are located in an old highway, no, it was a fire department barn down in South in Manshaw, section of Sutton. Um, and the cemetery commission took that over uh, after the highway built a new facility. And that the cemetery records were in a, a wooden file uh, system that you know, it was hard to distinguish which cemetery you'd have to contact one of the two cemetery commissioners that we have, Jim Johnson or Jim Renard, to get any uh, clarity of where people are buried and what's going on. So they'd pull out handwritten you know, charts and maps and so forth and say, I think this is what's going on. Uh, and Ross came in uh, to me along with the cemetery commissioners and, and maybe Brian Stevenson and said, you know, I want to digitize these records. And I thought that was so insightful. You know, if something ever happened to that barn, um, the, the floor is oil soaked and everything else, if there was ever a fire, all those records would be lost. And the history of the town in, in that pers perspective would be lost as well. So 
Uh, I, I talked to the select board and they were all supportive of it and uh, we gave the Ross the go, the go ahead for that. And, and now we have all the records digitized. We know where they are. We all have copies of them. So if anything ever happens in that highway, uh, the cemetery facility, then, then we're good to go. So uh, for all of that and, and more, Ross, thank you and congratulations on this award. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I apologize for my tardiness. Um, fortunately, I'm also a college professor, so I raced from class teaching history to come here to um, acknowledge this wonderful award that was given to my good friend Ross. Um, as, as Jim did mention, you know, history has a long, I'm sorry, Sutton has a long history, and um, our community has had residents that were involved in significant historical events. Uh, from my perspective as being an amateur historian, you know, military conflicts. And um, Ross, thanks to his dedication, has essentially allowed us to remember individuals who served in our nation's uniforms that just because of confusing lost records that just disappeared, essentially have been brought forward to our, our, our attention. So for about 15 and um, Yep, exactly, exactly. And, and I'm also commander of the Sons of the uh, American Legion down at the Dudley Jenner Post. And every single Memorial Day, we go to the cemeteries in town, and we read the names of the men and women who served our country. And every single year, yes, of course, we're losing members of the greatest generation, those who fought in the Korean conflict, the Vietnam War. But thanks to Ross's efforts, we've also added names to our record of people who fought in the Revolutionary War, and as far back as the French and Indian War, and the War of 1812. And just being able to recognize the individuals, you know, that's significant because it just shows that we as Sutton, we remember. So, Ross, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you continue to do. And if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you guys were out once again working on uh, working with the same service this past week. In fact, anyone who wants to join in, we, we're out there. Uh, uh, if you want to see the process, we're out there Friday evenings. Uh, Talk to us and also out there Sunday mornings uh, from uh, 9 to noon. We've been out there doing their weather for me. Uh, happy to show you the process uh, from your shovel. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations, Ken Ross. Before I introduce the, <clears throat> the congressman, uh, since we have a majority of the Board of Selectmen in Sutton, Superintendent Fitzpatrick was going to remind you as he did the manager that the budgets are coming up at town meeting and we need a yes vote for Blackstone Valley vocational appropriation. Yeah, yeah. You could actually do it tonight. You could do it today and then vote it at least recommend it to the town. Uh, finally, uh, a gentleman who I've come to know over the years is one of my, I think one of, probably the best member of Congress. Uh, he certainly, not only is he, he got a strong environmental record, but he's also been big, a big booster for the pollinators, for those the, the butterflies and the bees who managed to keep the world going and the environment going. Uh, as, as, as a member of a longtime member of the uh, Committee on Agriculture in the House of Representatives, Jim McGovern has, uh, is a leader nationally. Uh, occasionally, if you get C-SPAN or, or occasionally even on the news, we see the congressman speaking to members of the House or at a press conference or whatever. But he is uh, also someone who spends time in the district. And his district uh, starts, I think, the, the southernmost would be Blackstone. And it, it, you go, it's like a, an inverted L, I guess would be the closest thing, through Worcester, which is the biggest city, but then out to Northampton. So it covered, and, and I think you probably grew a little bit too. Did you? Some more. Oh, he's got all the all the hill towns and everything. So you're, he, he's that's why it's important that he be involved with agriculture as well, because there is still a lot of agriculture out in that part of the Commonwealth. Um, <laughs> but as chair chair of the, of the rules committee in the House, uh, it, he is a key member. You know, in the legislature where I served, the rules committee basically gets involved with the initial set of rules that are offered at the beginning of a two-year term. The Congress, there has to be a rule for each, each bill that comes before the House uh, as to what, how much time for debate and how it's going to be allocated and all that sort of thing. 
So it's a very critical spot and a very important one. And Massachusetts is fortunate to have uh, not only him, but also the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, Richard Neal, who also represented this area at one earlier point in time uh, as members of Congress from our region. And so we're very fortunate to have him with us. And he's been, uh, we're recognizing him today, particularly because he has, and since he, I think even before he got elected to the Congress, has been a supporter of the Heritage Corridor, which was uh, authored by one of his predecessors, Joseph D. Early, whose son now is the district attorney. But he was, Joe was a, a member of the Appropriations Committee and in a key spot to, on the House side uh, to get the legislation establishing the corridor through. Uh, and Jim McGovern has been a staunch ally, both in helping to keep the corridor authorized, which comes up every so many years, to, to extend, uh, but also been a very strong supporter of the funding that we need for the corridor and for him, by the way, and for the National Historical Park as well, uh, which, uh, which is, has a, at least one major node in Whitesville in the second district. Um, the Hopedale is, is, are you getting that? No? Is it still going to be up Yeah, okay, so it's, Hopedale is another node, which is a different congressional district, but we get the best one here. Uh, so with that, uh, if I could call Congressman McGovern. Chairman Moore, he's got so many titles, I don't know if you call him anymore. Um, but, um, but one of the things he didn't mention was that when he was in the state legislature, uh, he was one of the leaders on this whole initiative, uh, and we are eternally grateful uh, for him. Doug, thank you, and, uh, and thanks to everybody who's here. Um, you know, uh, getting an award named after John Chafee is a big deal to me, because when I first got elected to Congress, Oftentimes I'd fly back and forth to Washington out of uh, the airport in Rhode Island, and you know we'd often share the same seat, uh, same uh, same row, sit next to each other, and I got a chance to talk to somebody who had all this experience and get a sage advice on how you how you can be a good member of Congress. And one of the things that always impressed me about him was that it didn't matter what political party uh, you belonged to; what mattered was results. Uh, and he always believed that you didn't have to agree on everything to agree on something. And the something that we agree on, we ought to come together and get it done. Uh, and in the case of the Heritage Corridor, you have Democrats and Republicans and liberals and conservatives and everybody in between who are all excited about this, who have come together uh, to actually push this concept forward. And we've made remarkable progress. And I want to, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick. Uh, and, uh, and the students, uh, and Ms. Lamont, for, for all that you have done uh, for this project. Uh, it really is amazing. You've made a lasting uh, contribution here that will be there forever. Uh, and Ross, thank you for uh, your uh, efforts in uh, basically preserving our cemeteries and, and making sure that they are there for future generations so that people can not only acknowledge those who lived in our communities who contributed so much to our communities, but learn about our history. You know, in Washington, D.C., uh, where I live is about uh, maybe eight blocks from the Congressional Cemetery, which nobody even knows exists, uh, <laughs> unless you're really into this. Uh, and people walk their dogs there. I sometimes, you know, to clear my mind, go for walks there. And, um, you know, and, and thanks to, to, to this technology, you can Google names, and you can actually learn history about uh, people who served our country. Uh, actually, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, the former head of the FBI, is buried in the Congressional Cemetery. Very few people know that. They have a fence around his tombstone because uh, it's also a dog park. And so sometimes people deliberately bring their dogs in. Uh, and so that's to protect that. But the bottom line is, this is all about history. I was a history major in college. Um, and, you know, I always, uh, as I, pass through some of these communities or visit a cemetery, you know, or even walk along the Blackstone River, you know, I, 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 you start to think about who was here before all of us and what they contributed to not only this community, 
but to this country. I mean, this is the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. Um, and there are a lot of people who live um, in close proximity who I don't think really understand what that means or appreciates it. Or the people, you know, who were here before us, who are buried in our cemeteries. Uh, you know, again, you know, they, they built these communities. Whether or not they, you know, worked on a farm, or whether they fought in a war, or whether they were a leader in our community. I mean, there's history there. Uh, and what I like about the whole heritage corridor concept uh, is that it is kind of forcing us to learn more uh, and to celebrate more, and by doing that, calling more attention to this area. So in addition to all the history, there's another part of this that's really important, uh, and that is this is becoming a destination point. People want to come here, um, and more and more people want to come here, whether to be able to explore the pathways and be able to utilize your signs or to learn about a history by visiting uh, some of our cemeteries. Um, or learning about the river, uh, seeing all the nature, uh, and um, and that's good for economic development in this area. Uh, you know, we don't, we want the kind of economic development we want here is stuff that complements the character of this community. Um, and you're all helping make that a reality. And I have lots of friends here who I've worked with on this forever. Um, but here's the deal. Um, we're going to um, we're going to reauthorize the Blackstone Heritage Card. I'm working with Jack Reed and my Rhode Island co uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, you know, we're going to be looking for more money uh, to help uh, you know support this this vision. Um, the other thing is we're going to here in Massachusetts because you know um, uh, we, we need to do better on the on the uh, bike path. I mean uh, we started. We got to complete it so that you can get from Worcester into Rhode Island, um, and you know that needs to be done. Uh, and we just passed a major infrastructure bill, transportation infrastructure bill. Uh, the state has got billions of dollars, billions with a B, in, in federal uh, transportation infrastructure money. Certainly, some of that can be diverted to kind of move forward with this bike path so we can get that completed. Um, and as we get that stuff completed, everybody everybody benefits. The final final thing I want to say is that um, uh, this is a community project. And, and that's what makes it so special. So, you know, it's not just Senator Moore. Uh, it's not just you guys, right? It's not just Ross. It's not just the town of Sutton. It's not just, you know, the city of Worcester. It's, you know, uh, it's everybody. It's not just the local, not just the federal government. It's the state government. It's the local government. Everybody's working together as a community, as a team, to make this a reality. And I think the best is yet to come. Uh, I really do. Uh, I'm excited about the future, and uh, I'm excited about working with many of you on highlighting your work and you know, bragging about the, all the great stuff that is here. Uh, one of the things I'm working on right now, we should talk about this. Uh, I, I, I want to do a, a, a tourism tour uh, of uh, you know of this area um, and bring in people uh, from outside the community. You know, people who write for travel magazines, people AAA, people who write you know anything that can help highlight the incredible work that we are doing here, even more than what you have all done. Um, and again, I think that will generate more people coming to this area. Uh, so thank you, thank you for this. Uh, again, that it's named after Senator Chafee is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm real, it's a real honor for me to to get to uh, to receive, and um, and it's great to be with my friends from Sutton. You know, my my my, my parents both grew up in Sutton. My sister lives on Lake Singletary. That's where I'm spending Easter. Uh, too cold to swim. To want to skate, but in any event, uh, it's going to be. It's going to. I'm looking forward to it. But thank you for having me here, and thank you for all you guys do. Thank you. Well, that wraps it up for the speaking. I think uh, thanks to uh, Superintendent Fitzpatrick and the Culinary Arts Group.
we have some refreshments in the back, so and it, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, we're going to stay out of class for a little while longer for the pay. <laughs> <laughs> or shop, whatever, whatever is this week is uh, you're doing. Uh, and uh, if you have a chance, say hello to a member of Congress. He has most of the town, not all the towns in the, in the school district, but a good, probably the majority of them, I would think. Uh, plus there are other vocational school districts all over the rest of the second district of Massachusetts. Uh, but uh, thank you all. Thank, congratulations to everybody, to Congressman and to, to Ross and to the class and to Tom. Uh, John, I think Ross is giving you a couple of potential projects for, for the future. Uh, <laughs> hey, just I want to add, uh, Pine, Pine Grove Cemetery in Northbridge actually made all the signs there uh, <clears throat> through a Boy Scout troop and through here at PGT. So, uh, so we're... we're up and running and help you with anything you need. It's interesting you mentioned that because I thought about this and didn't say it. Uh, doing that type of science would be wonderful uh, through, through the cemeteries. Clint and I were over in uh, Ireland a couple of years ago traveling, and part of what we were seeing there is they were building, uh, putting in plaques in the area of the cemetery, not just to identify the cemetery, but actually gone to the point of identifying the individual as far as the burial sites. It's great for the people who are doing family research and everything else, you know, they're traveling around, and you are said, told that your fifth great grandparents are interred in a particular cemetery. If you can actually go over there and take a look at something such as that, and have an idea of where you're going to find them, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Along those lines, which we've been, we had a couple from uh, Washington State in the last year, uh, looking at who he is and his uh, fifth great grandparents are interred at the uh, Southern Center Cemetery. Uh, and so we don't have the signage, but fortunately with the work that's been done in the cleaning, uh, we were able to, uh, you know, four years ago we pointed out to two acres and said, well, somewhere out there. Because of this work that's been done, we were able to bring it right to the site and say, here are your fifth grandparents, uh, including the little turnover. Thank you. If I can add back to that too, so what, what we did for our project, uh, the Eagle Project, <laughs> Um, and we, we mapped out every veteran that was within the cemetery, and we made street signs, because most cemeteries have, like, kind of like streets, but, mm -hmm. so we had street signs that we built, and we made a map, and it matched every person's name with the street signs, so you can figure out where they were and had a location of them, so, so it was a great project that we did. Uh, and every year we put flags up, every year we put flags up, and we made this uh, dry erase board with all the names on it, so every time we um, found the veteran's name, we would be able to cross it off with that dry erase. And they would use it every single year. So it was a really, really good multitasking kind of uh, project. So nice. great. Any of you involved in surveying? In the surveying work and everything else? Different department. You have different department. <laughs> <laughs> a nice conversation to have with them because to go out and do some surveying on these things. A lot for a lot of these individuals, the record is the inscription in the stone. Mm -hmm. If it's broken, it's down, you can't you don't know where they are or anything else. The surveying was done on these things and GPS coordinates, especially the old ones, as we come in with the newer cemeteries, they lay out in lots and uh, grounds. The older ones don't have that. The surveyors, if they could go out and do that with GPS coordinates on the sites, 50 years from now, people are trying to locate more of these things and more stones are broken, there should be some of the records that would be used to find out where the are and where they go. So I think basically the outcome of this session uh, that the Blackstone Valley Vocational Tech School and the students and the faculty have a number of potential projects that they could, could undertake. Uh, the superintendent has some votes for the town meeting in support of his budget. The congressman has votes in support of his re-election. And Ross has a whole bunch of potential volunteers. So it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> We've all won today, and now it's time to have a coffee or whatever, and some pastry. And uh, congratulations, everyone.